opening up a new week on MLB Tonight, presented by Camping World. From the home studios, Matt Vaskersian with Dan Plezak, and fresh from the infirmary, tuned up with a brand new hip, <laughs> Harold Reynolds is back with us. Yes, you know, uh, by the leadership of Al Ladder, who searched out our doctor, Dr. Roy Davinovich, and then the encouragement of Dan Plesak, who went through it as well, I decided, yes, I'll go ahead and do the hip replacement surgery. And look at Matt. I'm coming back at you. No more Fred Sanford, Matt. I'm coming walking at you now. Or Jefferson's, or whoever you want to get on me about. But I'm feeling good. It's been uh, great. Dan, it's just remarkable. Uh, I'm only two weeks into this thing. And thank you for encouraging me to go do this. I'm excited about it. You know, Harold, we we both say, shared the same doctor, Dr. Roy Davidovich. The amazing thing to me is you go in on your own on the day to have surgery in the morning, and you find yourself with a new hip, and you're back home later on that same day. Yeah, but so much about me. Okay, so another great story, and even better than mine, is Art Howell, the former Major League Manager, you know, he was battling COVID-19. He came home Sunday from the hospital after being in the hospital for five days, and he's doing well. So that's fantastic news. Mine's nice, but his is great to battle through that and be okay at. So, Matt, that's kind of the, the, the health list of the big leaguers right now. Back to you, buddy. <laughs> yeah, cause to celebrate. And uh, not only are we going to celebrate some baseball milestones on MLB tonight, this evening, we're also going to have some special guests, courtesy of NTT Home Plate Cam. But on to those birthday celebrations. We'll kick it off. Happy 83rd Hall of Famer Brooks Robinson. In the minds of many, the greatest third baseman to ever play the game, at least from the defensive standpoint, if not all around. The 1964 MVP. 1970 World Series MVP, 18-time All-Star, and owner of a record 16 gold gloves. They say nobody would ever do it better at the hot corner, guys. Uh, he was special, man. I remember the, watching him as a kid growing up. But Dan, probably a nicer man than even a greater player. He's one of the nicest people I ever met. When you talk about the hot corner, everybody, every generation says Brooks Robinson was the best there ever was. Another Hall of Famer celebrating a birthday today. We're going to say hello to him in person in a moment. Mr. October, Reggie Jackson, the five-time World Series champ, two-time World Series MVP, 14-time All-Star Reggie Jackson turning 74 today. And what a pleasure it is to have Hall of Famer Reggie Jackson on with us so we can personally wish him a happy birthday today. Reggie, thanks for making some time. Happy birthday. Thank you very much, Matt, Dan, and uh, my old uh, <coughs> nephew there, Harold. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. No doubt about it. Hey, Reg, so I'm curious. You know, I get phone calls. Uh, I, no telling who might call me, but mainly just like high school friends or whatever. Who are some of the people calling you today? I want to hear some, like, names of people that are calling you because you are Mr. October after uh, all. Peter hit me at 520. And AM. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. AM. Uh, yeah, Posada, Pettit, Posada and Pettit. And uh, let me see, Dr. J yesterday. Um, Gervin Saturday. Uh, gosh, a few guys that get I didn't got old and forgot. <laughs> That's but, <good>. uh, <laughs> touch with quite a few guys and so it's it's fun it's interesting uh it's special and uh and very enjoyable I'll talk that's to pretty Joe. cool i'll well, talk to Joe here in a day or so i'll talk to him on friday so there's some some of the guys that call you say hey happy birthday i said man ain't my birthday oh monday i talked to mike schmidt talk to smitty i'll always talk to johnny bench he'll call him so that's awesome that's that's really cool um hey the one thing for me before you were mr october you got under my radar when i was a, a youngster and you hit the farthest ball i've ever seen hit in detroit in the all-star game on the light tower that was incredible now i want to know was that the furthest ball you ever hit um i thought i hit a ball further than that in minnesota uh once they had a stein out uh, behind the right field there, that ball there. 
Uh, I don't know how far that was. <laughs> Baseball in Minnesota one time. Um, that was like uh, the the center field fence was 450, and this fence was a little bit behind that, and it was about 50 feet high, and they had a a tree. It was a a bank there. If you hit that tree on the fly, it was fifty thousand dollars, and I hit it over it, and I I think that first ball I ever hit. But uh, I I hit a few long balls when I was a young fellow there, guys. <laughs> hey Reg, Reg, home yeah. run number five hundred off of Bud Black. What do you remember about it? Um, sadly, it was ten to nothing. Uh, we were getting killed, and uh, Buddy was an old left-handed friend there, and uh, he might have hit me here with a with a little fastball, in the middle. But um, uh, that's what I remember. But something special about it uh, was that it was September 17th, 1984. And on September 17th, 1967, I had hit home run number one in the same stadium on the same date. I was playing for Kansas City, and I hit the home run off a left-hand pitcher, Jim Weaver, in the same spot in right center. 17 years later to the day, um, September 17th, 1984, off a left-hand pitcher, I hit the same ball in the same spot, probably this, this obviously the same day. September 17th, wow. I one and September 17th, I hit number 500 in the same ballpark with the two same teams, both against a left-hand pitcher. Let's take you from uh, 1967, Reggie, to 1968. I got a prop for you here, okay? 1968, yes. Oakland A's yearbook, and yes. on Reggie Jackson's page, it says here that your greatest thrill in baseball was hitting three home runs for Class A Modesto on August 5th, 1966. So here we are 52 years later. Uh, is that your, still your biggest thrill in baseball, Reggie? Three home runs in yeah. Modesto? The, the, three home, the three home runs in California. You know, in uh, Modesto, California, I stayed at a hotel with $3 a night. And I went to the ballpark every day with Raleigh Fingers. And I played with Joe Rudy and Dave Duncan. And um, I got another pitcher that got to the big leagues with us, George Lazarique. But um, Fingers and Rudy and Duncan and I were all on the same team. Uh, and that was pretty cool then. And that's what I really remember about Modesto. It was, it was really a lot of fun. It was a special place. Um, I went to Modesto because I was in Idaho. Um, I'd hit three home runs in Tri City, up there in the in the, in the Yakima Washington Rookie League after June. You know when you get drafted, and I got hit in the yeah. head at the first week. Uh, I hit three home runs in Yakima in June in the snow. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I got hit, hit in the head, taken to the hospital in Lewiston, Idaho, which was our home ballpark, and I was not allowed to be admitted because I was colored. Wow. And our, our pitching coach was there, and the owner of the team, Charlie Finley, uh, sent a plane for me in the morning, and they took me down to, to Modesto. Wow. I, I, you know what, Reggie? You've got so many stories. Uh, and uh, one day we'll get to dive into them even more. But, man, we just wanted to wish you a happy birthday. 74 years young, Reggie Jackson, man. Hard to even I believe. Appreciate that, Al. But I, I wish it for you. Young is 74 years old. <laughs> not for us man mvp in 73 74 today reggie thanks for some time and uh, have a great birthday we appreciate you being with us hey guys always a pleasure i always try to check check you guys out 
Uh, Harold, I know you forever, and uh, it's always a pleasure to know you. And every time I see Dan Plesak, I always knew I could. I was getting a little bit older, and every time I saw him, threw that fastball right by me. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Reggie. All Happy right, birthday, guys. Reg. Yes. Thank you very much. Take care, Matt. Thank you, Reggie. When we come back, celebrating a milestone for Randy Johnson on this date in baseball history, next. MLB Tonight is presented by Camping World, making RVing fun and easy since 1966. Visit CampingWorld.com today. Home Plate Camp is presented by NTT. We sure hope for live baseball soon, but in its absence, the next best thing, Epic Innings presented by Flow Nays. Wednesday, 9 a.m. Eastern on MLB.com is when this starts. It's going to be an eight-hour stream of the best half innings in Major League Baseball history, 44 all told, starting from 1968 through last season, milestones, World Series walk-offs, perfect games, etc. interviews with special guests, including those that made those moments possible, one of those moments was made possible by Randy Johnson, and we celebrate an anniversary of one of his epic accomplishments today. Time for Winning Together, presented by Doosan. It was on this day in 2004, Randy Johnson not only authored his second no-hitter, it was a perfect game, no less. And at the time, he became the oldest pitcher, still is, to ever throw a perfect game. History made in Atlanta, May 18th, 2004. And Dan Plezak, if... If Randy Johnson hadn't already punched his ticket to Cooperstown, that was the day for many of us where it it, it was a no-brainer. Matt, you're right on. Dead on the money. I thought of all the guys that I saw during that time period, Roger Clemens, Brett Saberhagen, you could throw Kurt Schilling into the mix, Pedro Martinez. When Randy Johnson was on, he was the nastiest of them all. 6'11", leverage, threw the ball in a downhill plane, his slider that he called Mr. Nasty. When he was on and throwing strikes, he was a complete nightmare for lefties. And that breaking ball right there, that hard slider, there's that 98 to 100 mile an hour fastball. When he was on, virtually unhittable. Yeah, you know, Dan, I was fortunate enough to play behind Randy. I always love the backstories. And, you know, we got him from Montreal in the trade with Mark Langston. And he could not throw strikes. And I'll never forget, we were in Texas, and he goes to lunch with Nolan Ryan. And he sits down with Nolan, and Nolan basically told him, don't be afraid to hit somebody. Matt, think about that. He's throwing 100 miles an hour. He threw so hard and so intimidating, he was afraid he might hurt somebody. And Nolan basically said, you get a guy 3-0, and throw it at him and see what happens. They'll get out of the way. And that's how Randy got his confidence to just let the ball go. And he was never the same again. I think he struck out 17 the next day when he pitched. And that was the beginning of Randy Johnson. We kind of stumbled on a little bit of a Diamondbacks theme on this Monday, because not only is it an anniversary for Randy Johnson, but five years before that accomplishment, Luis Gonzalez did something in Diamondbacks history that still holds up today as well. We'll visit with Louis, the 19-year vet and five-time All-Star Coming up next. Winning Together is presented by Doosan. Doosan and MLB remind you to stay at home and stop the spread. Welcome back to MLB Tonight presented by Camping World. Diamondbacks theme on the program tonight. We talked about Randy Johnson and a milestone of his earlier, and it was on this date in 1999 that Chris Brock tried to sneak a little change up past Luis Gonzalez at Candlestick Park, no less, and a franchise record was born. 30-game hitting streak for the five-time All-Star, and uh, Gonzo joins us on MLB tonight. Gonzo, thanks for the time, man. Uh, in 1999, that was your first year in Arizona, first of five All-Star seasons. Did, did you have the sense that you were onto something special early in that year? Well, I'll be honest with you. When I got traded over to the Diamondbacks from the uh, 
Detroit Tigers, I was basically trying to find my swing and I had just opened up my stance uh, the later part of the year in 98 uh, with the Detroit Tigers because of short ports that they had out in right field at Tiger Stadium. And then uh, I went into spring training after they traded me and told Buck Showalter, hey, you're going to have to hang with me. I'm just uh, trying to learn this new batting stance that I got. And I tell you, every day in spring, I was grounding out the second base and I'm 100% positive Buck was like, we got to trade this guy. This guy can't hit. And then when the bell rang to start the season, I got off to that 30-game hitting streak. It's amazing. A streak that still stands as a franchise record today. I was looking at it before we came on with you here. And, and my question was, okay, what happened the next night? And then I saw Kirk Reeder's name on the opposing line. And I asked <laughs> yeah. my own question. Is that what went wrong? Yeah, I tell you, uh, you know, leading up to that 30 games, there was a... Uh, you know, just the, the, the excitement, anticipation of smelling the 30, and you're like, oh, I'm so close to it. And then once I got it, it was uh, it was a nice feeling to get to 30 games. But the next day, I I was totally off at the plate. I, I knew, and I was facing Kurt, where I didn't really have good numbers against him. It was almost like, okay, I've already gotten to the 30 games. I was satisfied with that. And I couldn't hit water if I fell out of a boat that day off of him. <laughs> Now, did you ever allow yourself to dream? Uh, I mean, you're you're a little over halfway to DiMaggio at 30, but did you ever kind of go down that road in your brain? You know what? You you thought about it after a while because I was getting a hit a night. There was a couple times where I needed extra innings to, to get an extra at-bat to, to kind of uh, save my hitting streak there. I think it was once or twice, maybe, maybe even three times. But, uh, yeah, it, you just marvel at the fact that uh, what an accomplishment that was to have the 56-game hitting streak. I don't know if anybody's ever going to be able to do that, especially in today's game with, with all the pitching changes and the matchups that guys have to go through. You were, as a player, uh, and correct me if I'm wrong, a moderately superstitious guy, maybe no more no less than most players, but – Talk about the culture around the streak itself. Were, were players avoiding you? Were you crazy about using the same equipment every night? What, how did you process all that? Oh, there's no doubt. Yeah, a lot of superstitious stuff. Uh, the same routes to the ballpark. If you, I was getting hit, so I was eating probably the same place every day, same time, uh, the <laughs> clock, you know, stretch time, going out, just trying to stay in somewhat the same type of routine that you have. You play 162 games. Guys go a little stir crazy sometimes. You have a lot of peaks and valleys. So players are always looking for something to kind of uh, take your mind off the stress and uh, but give you some type of normalcy. You played for 10 years after you, you created that streak for yourself, a nearly 20-year career. Did you ever think about, man, I got to get going again. I got to get 31. Well, it would have been nice to, to do that again. But, uh, you know, that happened in 99, my first year. A couple years after that, uh, I had some pretty decent seasons uh, with the Diamondbacks. But, uh, you know, it, it was fun. I mean, that streak was incredibly fun. Uh, I was more about trying to win games and trying to help my team win as much as we could. So, uh, yeah, if, if it would have happened again, that would have been fantastic. But uh, you just realize how difficult it is to do. You don't see a lot of guys doing it very often uh, in the major leagues. Very cool. Thanks for taking some time and uh, sharing your memories of it. I guess we could say happy anniversary to you for the streak. And uh, we hope to see you at the ballpark soon this season, Gonzo. Thanks, man. You got it, Matty. Always a pleasure. When we come back, the internet is crowded with tantalizing images of brawn. Uh, a new twist to that theme. <laughs> Next. <laughs> MLB Tonight is presented by Blue Emu Maximum Pain Relief. Works fast and you won't stink. The official pain relief cream of Major League Baseball. Welcome back to MLB Tonight presented by Camping World. And before we go, we must show you these images that surfaced on MLB.com and elsewhere of WWE champ Braun Strowman. Big Brewers fan, uh, and that the Braun comes from his fandom of Ryan Braun. You know, we have our own wrestling enthusiast in-house, insider Ken Rosenthal. Imagine, if you will, a tag team of Ken Rosenthal <laughs> and Braun Strowman. That's right. 
<laughs> oh, the power gosh, and the power of the pen. Unbelievable. <laughs> Unbelievable. I'll tell you what, watching Braun Strowman hit those balls, Dan, it took me back to, remember the king in his court? They used to come and take batting practice before all the big league <laughs> games. They used to hit the ball so far. It was ridiculous. All I could think in those shots were that I, there were very few guys that I would sit out and watch BP, but those Oakland A's teams, the Bash Brothers, that's kind of what they made real life batting practice look like in Milwaukee County Stadium and in Oakland. That shot reminded me of Conseco and McGuire. Those guys hit balls in batting practice that would scare the pants off of every pitcher. That's it for us. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again on Wednesday.